Hi, and welcome to Experience Points by University XP. On Experience Points, we explore different ways we can learn from games. I'm your host, Dave Ang, from Gamespace Learning by University XP. Find out more by going to universityxp.com. On today's episode, we'll learn from Terry Pierce. Terry is a highly experienced learning designer and game space learning expert. He has won awards for his designs and created solutions for organizations like HSBC and the National Health Service, NHS, in the UK. He founded Untold Play to enhance learning experiences using game principles. Terry has spoken at numerous conferences and published gamification books worldwide. Terry, welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me. So, Terry, I'm glad you were here because I really want to learn more about your work at Untold Play and generally just your work as a whole. So I'd like to start off with the question, as the founder of Untold Play, how do you help trainers, learning designers, and educators incorporate playfulness and gamification into their learning programs? Specifically, what types of products and services does Untold Play offer in this particular area? Yeah, great question. Um, So... In terms of services, uh, I design and facilitate uh, gameful learning experiences. So there used to be a specific brief or project for a client. Uh, it might be that they've requested something that's playful or gameful in the first place. So I might uh, be commissioned to design a game to fit into a learning program, for instance. Uh, or it might be that they have a kind of learning brief that's not specifically for games based, but um, you know, I have I have. Uh, some of those kind of requests come in because uh, I have a long career as a kind of generalist trainer before I start to specialize in games-based learning and gamification learning. And so uh, I would tend to try and guide people in those cases towards um, the benefits of games-based learning, the benefits of gamification for learning and, uh, and try and you know, introduce that into the design process. So either way, you know, it'd be a, a kind of design brief to, to put something like that together. Uh, or sometimes just to facilitate an existing game. So uh, there are games like Evive, uh, which is an online uh, multiplayer game, which brings out all kinds of things around strategy and decision-making and leadership. Um, So facilitating a a ready-made game like that for some clients. So those are the kind of services side of things. Um, And then in terms of products, uh, kind of really uh, starting out on the journey of offering products and have one kind of flagship product in kind of two installments almost at the moment, which is uh, the Transform deck, uh, which is a deck of cards that's designed to inspire people who are designing learning. Um, And that could be people who see themselves as learning designers, or it could just be trainers or educators that don't really see themselves as as designers, but they do put together learning. Um, And the the, the idea of the deck is it's a, a physical deck of cards, and each card represents a different way to take what might be quite straightforward, pedestrian kind of content and turn it into a more interactive, engaging kind of activity. Um, so there's a Transform Deck 1, and I've just released the sequel to that, Transform Deck 2, um, to help people through that process of making their own work more interactive and more engaging. Great. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate it. Uh, a bunch of things resonated with me there. I think particularly the, like that learning brief, um, specifically we're working with different clients and trying to determine you know, what specifically their organizational outcomes are, what specifically their learning outcomes are. I know that in, in the past, uh, individuals have asked me for a game-based learning solution to a particular learning outcome. And sometimes games do work for those particular purposes, but other times I've kind of advised against it specifically because maybe their organizational philosophy doesn't align with games-based learning or anything else. Uh, I'm glad you brought up Evive because I know that we both know uh, Mosin uh, Memon mm. from Evive. And um, specifically the Transform deck, although I want to um, uh, ask, I want to set aside some time to talk a little bit about the Transform deck later, but um, I'm, I'm yeah. glad you're able to share all of that, uh, particularly with the Transform deck two, um, which we'll hopefully talk about in, in a few moments. Fantastic. Uh, but the second question I wanted to get into, and you talked a little bit about this before, is applications of games-based learning. So I know we talked about specifically uh, HSBC and the National Health Service before, but what are some notable other organizations you've worked with in the past, and what solutions did you create for them using games-based learning? Yeah, so it's, it's uh, quite a, it's something I've been doing for quite a while, so it's quite a long list there. If I could just pick out a couple. Um So I did some work with uh, Illumina, who are the world leader in genetic sequencing hardware uh, machinery. 
and uh, they have some quite complex uh, systems, some quite complex pieces of hardware and processes for using that for, for sequencing genomes, things like that. And there's a whole learning challenge there, obviously, in terms of taking that quite complex information, uh, which is quite complex for them, quite complex for people in the field. So it's also quite complex for me as someone who's who's not uh, a scientist, not not in that field, uh, you know, working on that. But it's, uh, you know, the brief was to, to, to try and take that learning and really make it, first of all, uh, a little easier um, and more effective for people who are just learning this stuff. Um, and then secondly, uh, to make it more fun and engaging. Um, and so I developed a card-based kind of mapping. Um, I, I mean, it's, it probably does qualify as a game, although, uh, you know, it's not a, a full-on game with, with kind of a lot of the trappings of games, but it's a kind of gameful activity, perhaps, uh, of taking uh, in stages the process of exploring a process or uh, the way that a piece of hardware works uh, by using cards and building a map as a kind of uh, co collaborative kind of game almost. So that's one. I can go on to another one. I didn't know if you wanted to ask any questions about that one. Uh, uh, no, go ahead. I'd like to, to learn more about that second game you created. I'll save my questions for the end. Sure, no worries. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, I mean, the NHS actually is a, is a kind of repeat client of mine. So there's, uh, uh, for, for those who might be outside of the UK, you know, the NHS is a kind of federation of, of separate organizations really in a way. Um, and one of the uh, NHS trusts, separate separate entities that I worked with, um, worked extensively with and designed uh, quite a few different modules for both their leadership program and for different uh, individual uh, courses for their managers, but a couple of those um, in particular for that for that one because they were quite keen on um, on trying to make the uh, you know trying to make their shift towards playful and gameful learning and and to harness the effectiveness of it. Um, so created uh, for a module around um, performance management and uh, conversations around performance management, um, an activity uh, trying to make things more gameful called Hawks and Doves which is really just about kind of uh, with the rules uh, and with uh, the way the activity was set up, um, trying to push people towards more hawkish behavior and more dove-like behavior in some uh, kind of role plays um, to make people just that little bit, uh, you know, go towards the extremes, see how that plays in a situation, in a scenario where you're trying to discuss somebody's performance, that's quite a difficult discussion, um, and then use that, by a kind of series of staged uh, stages that, that follow on from that about exploring the effects of that and what would be the effect if we went somewhere in the middle um, to kind of um, you know show that actually there are problems with either end of that spectrum and that actually what we probably want is somewhere in the middle. Um, so that was kind of one activity on that program. Or there was another one where we took, you might have come across the, uh, the nine box model for talent management, um, which if, if anybody hasn't, it's just a way to look at people who you're trying to manage through your organization in terms of talent uh, and put them in a, a kind of three by three grid um, in terms of their potential and how, how they're fulfilling it. And took that grid and made that into our game board for a game where, uh, you know, you'll have your pieces being the people that you place on the game board and kind of say, OK, if this person, if you've placed them here in terms of uh, their potential and how you want to manage their talent, uh, let's turn that into a kind of turn based thing where, Okay, you place them here. Now this happens uh, through through some cards and, and events. Um, what happens next? And a series of of interesting decisions, which is really you know, the core of of most interesting games. Great, thank you, Terry. Lots to to discuss and unpack here. Um, I think specifically with, I forget the name of the original organization about genetic sequencing. Could you say that Illumina. name again? Yeah. Illumina. Illumina. Oh, I see. So I think that with any sort of like learning development or sort of any sort of training or uh, educational program, you're going to have to take those very complex topics and kind of break them down into more digestible chunks, particularly when you're trying to reach a specific learning outcome. So I find that games are good ways to abstract some of that information there. And uh, I don't know if um, you're you're covered by NDA or anything else, but I think that would that card game as a whole would be a good uh, case study for how uh, that content can be developed. Is that um, is that card game uh, available, or is it um, covered by the NDA, uh, NDA by your client? So it's quite. I mean, it would be covered by NDA, but also it's quite specific to you know a, a proprietary piece of kit. Uh, but the kind of general principles behind mm -hmm. it absolutely could be applied to a different 
uh, you know, piece of hardware with a little bit of work. I see. Um, and the second part here I wanted to talk about was your work with the NHS, and I think specifically talent management. And I think that the um, the market and the application of that is very wild, uh, wide, right? In that other organizations are usually working with um, with their managers and talent management in general. I'm not familiar with the nine box uh, cycle that you were talking about before, but um, I could see taking a um, like a, a schema or heuristic like that and translating it to a um, uh, an analogous game like environment would be very useful because uh, you know a lot of games are already based on those so- sort of formal structures. And I think what you've done, me not being really familiar with this uh, process overall, is uh, applying that to this game like environment in order to have managers um, uh, better manage their talent in their organization overall. So I think the, those two are really great applications of taking games and formal elements that we both know of games and applying it to those specific learning outcomes. So thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Too. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So last question I wanted to get into here. And again, you talked a, a little bit about this before, and I want to, to kind of tease this out with some more details, is you're, you're basically your work and your process. So um can you provide examples of how you've tailored or refreshed existing learning materials to meet the specific needs of your clients? And then how did gamification play a role in these adaptations? I know that you you talked about adapting that um, uh, that nine box model before, but has have you ever worked with any clients that have provided, you know, like base level information or, or maybe like the start of a gamified um, system that they wanted you to to take and adapt or anything that was like that? And what was your process like for adapting that content? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, th- I think that's quite common. Um, so I work with a lot of uh, corporate clients or, you know, someone like the NHS is public sector, but but it's still quite a similar kind of environment in many ways. And in those environments, I think there is uh, a tradition quite often of, you know, the sage on a stage, kind of slide based learning, lecture based learning. And there'll often be some kind of legacy materials or a, a, a kind of course that's, that's existing or some materials that are existing. Um, and people recognize, I think at some point, or somebody new comes in perhaps, uh, and recognizes that actually it's, it, you know, it doesn't excite people um, and it could be more effective. Um, and that's where I might often come in and, and trying to take what is in place and then look at what we're trying to achieve, the learning objectives, um, and then see how we can do that in a way that excites people and, and, and is more effective. So for example, um did that with um a client with some project management materials which were very much you know here are the principles of project management we're going to talk through them um very kind of one way kind of materials um and then kind of taking that and saying okay um if we've got these very specific learning objectives what can we do to make that into a game and a little bit like i was saying with it with the talent um grid you know saying what what things are there there that suggest uh, some kind of gainful approach or, or could easily lend themselves to it. So, for instance, with project management, you have several stages of uh, most project management processes uh, and different things that are happening at those stages. And once you start to kind of map that out, you can start to, uh, well, certainly in this case, I started to see, you know, a process that could be turned into, again, you know, it's not a game in the sense that, you know, something like uh, Ticket to Ride or Wingspan or, or, or whatever is a game, but it's, is a game in the sense that there are uh, turns and goals and uh, you know unexpected challenges that you throw in at the players that they have to then guide uh, their project through in order to reach the project's objectives. So it's kind of almost abstracting something which uh, in reality would be you know full of detail and richness and complexity, but just trying to make it um, simple enough that it can work within the context of the training room and the time that you have, uh, but still um kind of still get the key learning messages across um and still um you know still uh, be still feel relevant and real still feel like things that are that are going to they're going to take away from the room and be able to use and are practical um and one of the things that i often do to try and take into account with that and, and again did in this case is some key kind of models around gamification and games-based learning that to me kind of always spark and inspire ideas things like the octalysis framework or um, Nicole Lazaro's Four Keys to Fun, or um, just some uh, Jesse Shell's uh, Deck of Lenses is another great one. So I've got quite a few kind of key models like that that I'll uh, kind of use to inspire me to think, oh, could I work this in, this principle? Um, could I use this to kind of build on something to make it a little bit more gameful, playful, interactive, 
uh, etc. Great, thank you, Terry. For I uh, appreciate that. Uh, I think that particularly approaching project management is a, is a really ripe example actually for applied game space learning because again i think like in most organizations your managers are going to be working on talent management but also there's um many organizations that work on a project based basis and i think mm -hmm. that the aspect of project management is a is a critical one to undertake having been in a project management role myself and also working with other project managers working on projects as an individual contributor is incredibly important um i know that you cited some of those uh frameworks before, particularly the Ectolysis framework by uh, Yukai Chow, um, mm. which I will um, link in the uh, show notes for this particular episode, is is incredibly useful. And I think it's it's um, also indicative that uh, you, you don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel here. There are frameworks that you can follow in order to adapt uh, content and existing content for for applications of games based learning, serious games, and gamification. So, thank you, Terry. I appreciate you sharing. No problem. All right. So uh, thanks for joining us today. Where can people find out more about you, Terry? Yeah, um, I mean, the key place is my website, uh, untoldplay.com. And uh, via the website as well, uh, people could join my mailing list, which I, I try and keep uh, full of uh, interesting links and insights into uh, games-based learning and gamification for learning, um, as well as uh, the articles that are published on my blog. I uh, post those out through the newsletter as well. Um, very happy to connect with people on LinkedIn. Very happy for you to pop the uh, show notes, uh, to put my LinkedIn profile on there. Um, there's probably two main ways that I connect with people, either via the website, which is also where they can find the Transform deck, um, or via LinkedIn, yeah. Great, thank you, Terry. And again, all those links are gonna be included in the show notes for this particular episode, so just check it out there. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to learn more, then a great place to start is with my free course on gamification. You can sign up for it at universityxp.com slash gamification. You can also get a full transcript of this episode, including links to references in the description or show notes. Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm your host, Dave Eng from Gamespace Learning by University XP. On Experience Points, we explore different ways we can learn from games. If you like this episode, please consider commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Subscribing is absolutely free and ensures that you'll get the next episode of Experience Points delivered directly to you. I'd also love it if you took some time to rate the show. I live to lift others with learning, so if you found this episode useful, consider sharing it with someone who could also benefit. Also, make sure to visit University XP online at universityxp.com. University XP is also on Twitter at university underscore XP, and on Facebook and LinkedIn as University XP. Also, feel free to email me anytime. My email address is dave at universityxp.com. Game on.